Hello, welcome to a conversation with Empowered Carers. My name is Emma Smith. I'm the project manager with Empowered Conversations, and that is a project of um, Age UK Salford. I'm really excited today to have Leslie, Amanda and Rachel with, with me. Um, I wondered if you could introduce yourself, please. I'm Leslie Horrocks, and I am a carer for my dad, who has Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's. And I'm Amanda Burrell. I'm an empowered carer facilitator and I support people as Leslie um, on one to one sessions and group sessions as well. Rachel Yates Hoyles, and I'm the project manager for Empowered Carers, um, which is coming up to four years now. I've rounded it up to five years. I'm calling it five years. It's been that good, I thought it was. <laughs> Um, if you've not been on a webinar before, you should only see um, us on here. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure if you can use chat. If not, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom if you want to ask us any questions. I'm going full on um, Fiona Bruce today. So I'll be asking the questions uh, to Leslie, Amanda and Rachel and they'll be answering. But we'll make sure we've got time at the end um, for your questions to be answered, if that's okay. Right, I think then we'll make a start. Leslie, can you describe what Empowered Carers is? Um, to me, um, it's a one-to-one -one support for family carers living with loved ones who have dementia. Um, it's a place and a way to open up. Um, it's, like a, it's like a lifeline, a lifeline it's like a sounding board. Um, but more than anything, the only way that I can describe it is as angels in disguise, because um, Amanda specifically, she helps make sense of the mess and the muzziness that's in my head. Um, and it's a way to get through that maze of thoughts and, and feelings. Um, she doesn't tell me what to do. She doesn't tell me what to say, but she says, the way she says things, it sort of teases out through suggestion and I come out, you know, I'm able to sort of express then um, what's going on. So, yeah. That's brilliant. Thanks, Leslie. She's not really in disguise today. She actually does look like an angel with her outfit and halo. <laughs> Rachel, can you tell me where Empowered Carers came from? So, Empowered Carers has been modelled from the evidence-based tested approach from the, from the New York Carer Giver Intervention um, it originally came from a psychiatric um, epidemiologist called Mary Mittelman, um, and I think it was only around 2005, 2015. Um, but like Leslie says, it's it's to support spouses, partners, families, caring for people living with dementia. Um, and its main aim is to reduce stress um, and care a burden whilst um, improving the quality of care, you know, for people living with dementia. Um, and this type, type of like counselling framework and um, the, the original evidence um, that came from 2015 was to reduce the hospital and a &E stays crisis care by 557 days. Wow. I mean, that's just an enormous number. Massive figure that, isn't it? And I think, you know, from what we hear from carers um, who have the one-to-ones, it's it, it's like what Leslie says, it's this you know, safe, non-judgmental space for carers to, to open up and talk about their everyday life. Um, we do promote and empower people to find their own solutions, a little bit like what Leslie said there. Um, we, we really do promote self-care as well within, um, within carers. Um, and I think what's unique about this service, which from what we know is the only service that we know in the UK, is um, that we walk alongside people. It's not like a sick session and, and there you go. You know, I think like for Leslie, I don't know, Leslie, we've been working with you for about three years now. So, uh, yeah. So we, we can follow people throughout all the different trans transitions of care from you know, diagnosis all the way through to bereavement. So that's what's unique about this and the research backs that up. And I know, Leslie, that sort of ring, must ring true to you, that sort of walking alongside you. Like if you think of what's happened to you over the last three years, you know, having Amanda there for you as sort of a constant has been helpful to say the least. It, well, it has because it's not just been, um, not just been my dad, um, 
I, gosh, here we go. Amanda actually was my mum's carer. Uh, so yeah, my mum's counsellor initially. Um, and mom, I lost my mum to COVID the first week of lockdown. So Amanda has been there for me since. And I, wouldn't, I don't know where I would have been without her. I really don't. She's been an absolute superstar. And I think the service that you provide is just, it's, it's unparalleled to anything else. There isn't, well, there isn't anything else like it. Thank you so much for sharing that, Leslie. And I suppose it's that flexibility in how the service is delivered that allowed Amanda to sort of switch from your mum to you to support you with not only looking after your dad now full time, but also like, you know, the grief process around your mum. So it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it really has been. And it, it's there's still things coming out now that I, you, I'd never thought would there was anything else there was more to come but it's surprising just how much it things are stuck in corners you know um and it's just something just prompts it to come out and it's like oh where did that come from but you know I wouldn't have been able to to find that if it wasn't for Amanda's help you know I love that idea that things are stuck in corners, so you're not quite getting to them. Amanda, what does a session feel like? How do you get those things from the corners? <laughs> a session is really powerful. So it's literally, it is about breaking stuff down. Um, we have a strength-based approach. We really focus on what people can do. Um, you know, so initially we kind of, we send out a welcome letter and within that welcome letter as well, we focus on the fact that you know, people are not broken. People don't need fixing. They have their own answers. We just need to help them sort of tease those answers out and find those answers. <laughs> so it's about focusing on what is important for the carer, what the goals are. We use questions that kind of um, raise self-awareness and, and help them find and search for those answers that are stuck in those corners in a way. And we explore the thoughts and the feelings. You know, what's it like to go through that? What's it like to observe? you know, and bear witness to, you know, what you're dealing with, what's it like to be a carer. We look at the limits um, as well and what else they can do, you know, what's going to help them cope and be more resilient. Um, you know, what do they need to kind of include them as well? Because we find that a lot of people when they first come in, the goal is I want to keep my dad healthy. I want to keep my dad, um, you know, happy. And it's kind of like, well, where are you in that as well? Um, you know, so we focus on, you know, including the carer in that because they, it's it's a package. It is a, a package. We explore some really difficult questions um, and difficult con conversations, should I say, not questions as such, but difficult conversations. Because as Leslie said, and as Rachel pointed out, we stay with people on the journey. You know, we don't kind of look at the fact that, you know, you're no longer a carer if your loved one goes into care. You know, that we're just still quite often play in the role of that primary carer some people going in all the time to feed people and so on um, especially since the essential caregiver was put in place through lockdown and we look at you know that transition of care what's it like handing over that care in a way what does it feel like we explore all sorts of guilt and stuff like that and making those decisions even making the decision into you know like which care home and you know all that kind of stuff and, and end of life, of course, we do look at, you know, um, what does the person want? What do you want? And, you know, how does that all feel like? What's it like to even have that conversation? So we literally stay with them throughout the entire journey. Um, and, and as Rachel says, through death, dying and bereavement as well. Powerful, very powerful, but an absolute honour. Thank you for that, Amanda. Um, Leslie, how does it feel like, how does it feel for you? So that's sort of Amanda's perspective. What about your perspective? What does a session feel like? Uh, it's like a huge sigh of relief, uh, like a breath of fresh. These, these are just sort of things that to, to, to try and put it into one, a uh, breath of fresh air and making sense of your thoughts and feelings because sometimes it's not just what's in your head, it's what's in your heart as well. And as much as your head tells you one thing, your heart tells you another. And it's, it's sort of breaking down what, especially like, like Amanda just said about end of life and things like that, um, which is because, you know, it's going to happen, 
but um, when you the, the still you you know like my dad's still here, I know it's going to happen, but it's like preparing myself a little bit. Um, but it's also it it's 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 always it's like a, a finding a way uh, to work all, all the, everything out um, and give me clarity. So it's like by the end of the like I say when by the end of this of a session it's like Amanda's giving me the suggestion she's prompted questions and it's teased out my 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 answers have been teased out from what I what I already know but I just you don't realize it it's like just pluck it you know like I can't think of a word um it's just like it's, it's clarity I think I think it, I think probably clarity is the best word um but also priceless absolutely priceless um you know I always feel like feel so much ease once I've once I've come off uh, off the, a, a conversation with her um she's just she's just brilliant she's amazing. Thanks, Leslie. That made me think of like, you know, if you're taking a photo and things come into focus, so everything's there, yeah. but actually yeah. you, 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 you're waiting you for it to focus and sharpen it and go, oh yeah, that's, that's it there. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's only, it's like I say, it's only at the end of the session that you realise, well, I didn't know that really, but why didn't it come to me myself, you know, but I think that it's like, it's like saying that these little corners, you, they're there, it's there, but you can't, you know you can't see it needs teasing out not mm -hmm. you can't do it by yourself and i think sometimes it's having that moment for you isn't it that's your time that moment to pause and reflect you know and yeah obviously i'll bounce questions back on the phone and that kind of thing but it's, it's your time to mm. you know because life's so fast isn't it when especially when you're a carer and you're juggling so many things in life and then where do you fit that in and i suppose this is literally your time to pause Me, and reflect I, yeah it's yeah. me time yeah. you know and for that for that time that we have I'm thinking about nothing else as such no other added pressures of you know day-to-day -day life it's just the here and now and it's that here and now that is so important at that particular time you know so so yeah and it's just, like I say it's just it's 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 a, it's a sigh you just think you know when you finish it's just like oh that feels feel, feel a bit better today you know oh where did that come from you know, that kind of thing you know it's 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 surprising how things come out things that have been there for so long that are so deep rooted um but you can't do it yourself you know I think what carers tell me as well Leslie is that they, they, it's a struggle sometimes to talk to family members because they are very emotionally connected and they're close and they don't want to offload or burden other family members to but but by coming to our sessions it's you know we're impartial aren't we you know yeah. we're, we're just we're a clean sheet bouncing back to you um i think it, i think the difficulty is as well because because i'm on my own i um i don't have a partner to to talk to um you know it's just me and the dog you know i've got my brother there don't get me wrong but my brother has got his family and you know to to and work and, and everyday life to, to contend with so you know it's like it's that's why it is me time it's time for me to actually get my feelings out thank you thank you leslie but get martha okay. over for a snuggle <laughs> while i no, ask rachel a question come on martha no. get over she need it's part of your training come here pop rachel no. How does all of this, how does empowered carers sort of fit with other the other work that's happening already in Salford and Bolton? So across Greater Manchester, well, we work well um, with the Well Pathway for Dementia. So that's the NHS Well Pathway for Dementia, which um, lots of other organisations follow, and that's embedded into our practice. So for those that are not familiar with, with the, um, the Well Pathway, it's preventing well 
diagnosing well, supporting well, living well and dying well. So we follow that sort of process really. So when we're looking at like, um, so for example, diagnosing well, we will work with the memory assessment team. So we get quite a lot of referrals. So when, so when families are diagnosed with dementia, you know, we, we accept referrals from the memory assessment and we liaise with the memory assessment. So that's, that's good practice for people that people feel they feel held across the system don't they you know it's not disjointed and things and so as part of our work we are working with other professionals to build up their relationships so that we know what they're doing they know what we're doing and I think over the, the years as well we've simplified the referral form as well so it's more accessible for people there's not form filling to fill out you know it's very simple now for, for anybody who wants to refer in so we do connect very well to other organizations um supporting well you know we've got a very experienced team here at Empowered Carers um, and we're very well aware of what groups are going on in the community what's happening you know locally or nationally and we're flexible i think to other to carers needs so people can access empowered carers via zoom which is good we like to see people's faces uh, we like to see people's smiles yeah um, but obviously if that's not an option for people you know telephone we can we can you know we can ring people up um, so all we can do is make sure they're both, which, whichever, you know, we don't always have to rely on if our Wi-Fi is working um, or other things are going on in life, you know, um, but we are flexible to people's needs around that. Um, and we, we like to, you know, reach out into other groups as well. So some hard to reach groups, as people may say, you know, the BMA groups and things. Um, so like we've just moved into Bolton as of April. So um, the team there have been out and about attending groups and dementia cafes and physiotherapist team meetings and things like that so we've we've been out there we know the back roads of Bolton now you know so we know the, no, the nooks and crannies so that when we do come and support carers we're we're filled with this knowledge as well of where we can refer people on to um, and then obviously the dying well you know we're holding people along we're following people along the path um, Amanda runs a bereavement group so for people who have made you know, may choose that they don't want their one-to-ones anymore, but they might want to come to a, um, a group, a carers group that we run on a Wednesday um, or the bereavement group, which Amanda and Joe run, um, which is the monthly group. So we're here to follow the national pathway, linking with other organisations and follow the best practice, which, um, which we do. Amazing. Sorry, I had to put myself on mute and then I couldn't get back to my unmute button because I put a document in it because I was having a cough. Leslie, do you get any other support? Um, I initially, the, how I met Amanda in the first place was uh, my mum, dad and myself used to go to the Dementia Cafe. Um, it was at Eccles when we first started going. And um, and that we we all gained something from that. That was amazing. Um, I we also went to the Age UK, which was the opposite. It was like one week it was um, dementia cafe through the mental health team. Mental health team at I can't Kathy remember. Riley. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, the following week it would be at um, the church at St Thomas's, yeah. and that through age uk so yeah so it was it was it was something to look forward to um and and also sharing uh, you know sharing experiences so that was good um and i what else have i done um i've done i did the story box um which was fantastic and that was quite emotional um with Jen, jennifer um and i've done the beyond words um with Barbara um and Margaret um and that led on to um speaking to Maggie Ellis um uh, so yeah so I, I've been really really lucky that I have been able to access all these other things but they're all interlinked <laughs> you know and it all comes back down to yourselves um because there isn't anything else available that I can find you know, locally or, or, any, or otherwise, um, you know, and I, and I just think it's, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. The whole thing's been an amazing 
um, and quite inspiring as well in some respects. Um, and also gaining that extra knowledge from other people and it, it, you know, in a different way of thinking about things. So yeah, so all, they've all, all had their own little thing. Um, you know, you've been able to pluck a little bit out from here and a bit from there and so yeah. So, and I wonder, Leslie, has it helped in itself the fact that everything's been interlinked, if that makes any sense, the fact that there was a connection? Oh, uh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so much, so, so much. You know, like, like I said, I mean, the story box for starters, um, you know, it was all my own words. And for somebody to put it into, into poetry um, was just unbelievable. And it's only when you see it in writing and you read it back, you think, oh, wow, you know, I've thought that, I've said that, you know. I mean, the most poignant one for me was the story about my, the, the poem about my mum's garden. Um, and it was all visual, you know. And then I suppose that links in with Beyond Words because, again, that's all visual. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's a different way of thinking about things, a different way of communicating. And so, yes, I, I think it's, it's all all integral you know it's this it's like it's a natural path it's in my eyes it's a natural path to go down but it all comes back to um what we've what I've gained from yourselves and and like I say it is because of yourselves that I've done them in the first place so yeah thanks Leslie thank you that's really helpful um Rachel how many people are you supporting across Salford and Bolton at the moment so um in so we've got a team of three people in Salford and a team of um three different people in Bolton. Um so we're currently supporting about 70 carers in Salford. So 70 families there. And we only started in, we only launched in Bolton in April, but I think currently we're getting up to the 40 carers in Bolton. So yeah, that's about just over 100, isn't it? 110. Yeah. So so yeah. Um and I've just seen a question on the Q&A around do we support people? I'll just, I'll, inter, I'll, I'll answer it now. I think it's Lady Gold Cathy. Um, but yeah, we support. So if you, you don't have to live in the area that your love, so if your loved one is in either Bolton or Salford, then we're the two areas at the moment that we're funded for. So we can only really support um, Bolton and Salford. So if you're, if it's your mum and dad that live in that area, but you live 100 miles away, you can still access the service. Or you I think can live she does. Else. I think she does live a hundred miles yeah. away. How did you know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you for yeah. that, Rachel. <clears throat> on that, you sort of hinted. You you said seventy and forty. You said families because it's not necessarily just one person that you'll be supporting. Can mm. you tell us a little bit more about that? So um, it's entirely because we it's entirely bespoke, obviously, to the to the referral that comes into the carer. And sometimes it is just like one carer, but sometimes it's like, um, oh, can my sister come along? You know, so or can my husband come on? Because what we find is, um, you know, it's not just one dementia has a ripple effect, doesn't it? And when a person gets diagnosed, it's not just that one person, it's their family, isn't it? It's their family yeah. unit, it's this ripple effect. So, um, so yes, it will, you know, reach out to whoever wants to come on the Zoom. Um, I've had a family of three sisters. Um, so in, initially one came on, then another one, and then the trio came on, and then they carried on to have the trio. Um, and it was, it was so lovely because it's so nice to see as well, people working as a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about reconnecting isn't it you know it is about that connection you know we try to obviously keep people connected to the person living with dementia you know which is is one of the goals but one of the aims should i say but actually it's about connecting the whole family like you say it has a knock-on effect doesn't it you know so it is we are open for you know brothers sisters you know mums dads whatever to kind of join the um, they want a session on their own beforehand that that's also fine as well um, because we do come across a lot of family conflict as well within our conversations. Um, so if if possible, and it's people's choice if they want to do that, we mm. can bring people in if that's what they want. See, it's like my brother and I. I I have the, I have the counselling. Andy was given the option, but didn't want it. But, and he, you know, he, he's you know he's not interested in joining in a session but he's interested in what i get from it 
So we do have the discussion. So it is, even though he doesn't actually physically join, it is shared with him as well. So I think that's another way of looking at it is that it's not just that person that you're supporting, you know, face to face. There is that other connection as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I echo that, Leslie. I've got one family as well who just one person comes on, but they write notes mm. and the family have a WhatsApp group. So they, they take a photo of the notes and then they share it. And it's part of the conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, although we think we're supporting one person actually they could be four five or six at the ripple effect of this mm. um because we understand that everybody wants to come on the zoom and and things so um but yeah although we are supporting like 100 110 i think the number's a lot more than that absolutely definitely thanks rachel amanda what difference do you see in the carers that you support what difference see a massive difference yeah it's it's unbelievable i mean this this kind of like three themes we've got some amazing researchers on our team we've got three sort of main themes that have come out um of a lot of the work that we do and one of them is we see an increase um in the knowledge through practical support people become a lot more able to problem solve um, you know, kind of looking at what they can do, and you know, what else they can do, that kind of thing. And what we do find, I know I'm sure I'm speaking for both myself and Ray, and, in, and even Leslie could probably echo this, that even in between sessions, you know, someone might come on another session and it's kind of like, you will, you're like my little emoji on my shoulder. You know, I had this situation last week and I'm thinking, what would Amanda, what would Rachel say? You know, and they start problem solving by themselves in between sessions, which is exactly where we want them to be, you know, because um, we want them to be able to kind of do, you, you know, problem solving without us. Um, but yeah, it is, it's so powerful. You do see that shift in people being able to solve their own problems. Um, also as well, the second thing that we do uh, really notice is a change in perspective towards the person living with dementia. Um, so we really get curious about what it's like for that person living with dementia. You know, why might they sort of, be, how might they be experiencing their world? Why might they be in a certain way? Um, you know, little things like, you know, even, even when, um, you know, you walk away from dad, but actually he opens his eyes and you really wish that he'd been open, he's been awake all through the session, but actually it's just that he knew you were there, but, you know, he's kind of what he's, he's woke up because you've moved away. But yeah, really sort of getting a focus on what it's like for that person with dementia. And then the carer kind of comes like across in more of an empathetic approach, if that makes any sense. So they actually approach the caring role in such a different way. And that then leads into the third theme, which is the increase in well-being. Because obviously, you know, if you've kind of got a, a handle on the situation and you understand someone better, then that, you know, makes you feel better. And then the ability to problem solve as well links into that well-being, that increase of resilience and that kind of thing. And also, as Rachel said earlier, we heavily focus on self-care. Um, we heavily focus on where are you in this and what do you need to be able to, um, you know, continue doing what you do. Um, so, yeah, an increase in well-being as well. So they're the three themes. We see a lot of other differences, but they're the main kind of three that we we focused on. I'm Sorry about again. Uh, that thing with what you said about you about you being on my shot on somebody's shoulder. It's true. It is so true. <laughs> I've come, come like it can be a couple of days after we've spoken and I'll think how would Amanda think about that how would she get me to solve that problem so it's that's it's quite good it's nice to know that there are other people that, that feel like that as well you know and the, and again the thing like you said about that with my with me with my dad I can go to see him and he'll be asleep, asleep but when I've moved away from him he said my name you know, but a lot of the time he knows I'm there because I always hold his hand, you know. So it is, it is it, and it, it, but it is all, again, it's all connected, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Jim. It's really interesting as well. I've got another example there of the change of perspective. I was just a lady that popped in my head then. And um, it was interesting that she was at a group with her husband earlier on in the week and she was saying there was this woman there. And um, she said, and she's quizzing him. She's got, and she said, and I could see the look on his face. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, can you can you not see? Do you not know? You know, and it was really interesting because actually that was something that she used to do. She used to quiz him 
you know, and now she's kind of realized that actually, you know, I need to maybe step back, use the invitation to respond and kind of approach it in a different, more empathetic way. So it's interesting how we see these things um, and carers responding in a different way. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, Amanda, you sort of talked about well-being, and it's a word that I think we bandy around a lot in the health and social care sector. Um, and when we're thinking about caring for someone with dementia, you know, we're not thinking that you come along to one of the, an empowered care session and you leave dancing. You know, I think the way you described it, Les Leslie, like as a sigh or as a, you know, it's just feeling a bit better, a bit able to carry on. It's not like it's not massive. Um, if we were looking in, but actually it is massive for you because mm -hmm. it does mean that you can carry on doing what you're doing and doing it to the best that you can do it. God, yeah, it, it, it is like, it's almost like you, you start the session with a brick on either shoulder and by the end of it, they've gone, you know, and, and it is that, like I say, the sigh of relief. I think that's the, the best way to describe it. It is just like a massive sigh of relief. You literally it's coming out with the best a... analogies. I know. Yeah. Do you know, it just made me think of a carer when I said to her, you know, how do you feel at the end of the session? And she just went like this, like lighter. And your bricks there, Leslie, on your shoulders yeah. being weighted down. I think, you know, that mirrors what this lady said there. She just, mm -hmm. she just I just feel lighter. Yeah. Like yeah. she could just float, float yeah. above and just, you know. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can start a session and be in tears and, and by the end of it laughing you know, or sort of, you know, something's, we've prompted something, or Amanda's prompted something, or I've said something, and it's sort of, you know, so there's that as well, it, it's just your whole well-being, it, it really does, it makes such a massive difference, it really, really is, it's, it's so important. And I think but, that's a really good point as well, Leslie, that you've kind of let me into there, is that, you know, actually, the start of the session and the end of the session you know some people might get tearful but we'll absolutely never leave them in that state we always make sure that they're grounded you know by the end of the session um you know and we might use breathing techniques we might use relaxation it depends on the person and what they need in that session but we're absolutely never going to leave somebody in a situation um where they're not grounded mm. Thank you for that. Rachel, what's the research behind this? Your caregiver intervention, that's where originally, that's what we're based on. So we've already started on a, on a strong evidence base before we even started four years ago. We knew this was best practice. And what we've been doing over the four years is slowly building on that. So the initial research, which we did four years ago, um, that, that pulled out some key themes as well of what we're doing. So the Zooms were recorded as part of the research for that. Leslie, I think you might have been involved in, in that research as well when we did that, when we first started. So yeah, we had two years of um, recorded Zooms, which we had two researchers, you know, really drilling down in to what we said, what the carer said, looking at the conversation between us, um, you know, how can people stop and pause and reflect on what that does for people. And um, so we've over the years we've been building and building on that. Um, now we've moved into Bolton, we're still continuing to build on that evidence research there. And we use we've been using the um, the carer burden scale, uh, when webs we use on the perceived stress scale. Um, so that's some of the scales that we use to sort of like measure. Um, and we also measure, you know, fee feedback, what people say to us, you know, we can pull out keywords that people sort of, you know, and that's where we get the, the themes that Amanda was talking about there. Um, the ability to, you know, to problem solve people's own problems, not, you know, we don't have the answers. People have got the, the, the resources within themselves to find their own answers. We're just, you know, facilitating that along the way. You know, our answer might not be their answer, so but we'll help them find their answer. You know, so um, definitely problem solving has become, you know, part of what we do, um, and building on the resilience as well. That's that's another part, and the well-being as well. Um, you know, I, I had a lady today, and you know, I mentioned well-being. She's oh, stop mentioning that word. You know, it's and like you say, it is banded around, isn't it? And um, by the end of the session, I said to her, "What? Well, what's important to you then? What's what is it that you need to get through the day?" And she actually came up by the end of the session with, "I need to say no more often to people." So it wasn't the bubbly bath 
or the walk or the art or whatever that people might think self-care is. To her, it was about putting boundaries in place. So we spoke about, you know, well, where does that come from? What does that mean to you? Um, and it, it was delving into one of them corners that Leslie was referring to earlier. Um, but it is around building up this resilience in people and this well-being, isn't it? Which builds on the New York caregiver intervention. All them themes that we see, we're just building on that, you know, so we know we're on the right track all the time. Thanks, Rachel. And you, you often, you and Amanda often say, you're not there to fix people. People don't need fixing. And I love that because quite yeah. often in this sector that we work in, there's sort of like a mentality that we've got to fix it. It's like that medical way. We're going to fix it. Someone's broken the leg. We're going to fix it. And we're not fixing anything. We're just providing space for people like Leslie, like you said, that space just to, to pause, to think, to reflect, to listen what you've already said, but have someone else sort of send it back to you nudge it a little bit i think that's what we, we do nudges but we don't do yeah. anything else we're clean sheets for people to bounce off you know so um a lady i had this morning that's exactly what she said you know she said oh i do feel better now i've got it all off my chest and and research that like commitment to research you know that goes from from like from the beginning of empowered conversations to the beginning of empowered carers to how we go about stuff now that we're committed to you know having a strong evidence base and then building on that base so that we can say actually yeah, it does make a difference it's not just a nice thing it's not a nice extra this actually makes a massive difference to people's i think lives. what carers as well will say when we mention the research element of it and why we're doing the questionnaires and you know where what's happening with this information and data and what we're using it for you know it's an extra added bonus for the carer as well sometimes you know that they're because they want to give back they value the service so much that uh, this is just a little element that they can give back to, you know, to make sure that, you know, we are doing the, you know, following the best practice and that this is allowing all the carers to come in and access the service. Um, so it's a little added extra for them as well. They, they like that. It is. I mean, for me personally, I think that's, that's it. the exact words I would use is I want to give something back to yourselves because you've been so amazing for me and continue to be that way, you know, and, and I know there's, you, you don't ask for um, for anything from us, but if you can just make that little bit of difference by answering a few questions or filling out a questionnaire, it's the, the knock on it as them because there's so many people that don't realise just what carers go through. And also the, in a lot of cases in the, within the UK, it, that service isn't there. Mm -hmm. So then it's then the knock-on effects that that will have then on the NHS. So it's it's draining more resources. So another added thing of the research element as well is, you know, I've had many carers and Amanda, has, I think as well, has had many as well, where they've done two questionnaires because we do them at generally session one, six and 12. So they might get to like, they've done two questionnaires, they know the questions already and they want to know, they use it as a reflection tool for themselves mm -hmm. as to how far mm -hmm. they might have come. Oh gosh, I remember when I answered this in the first one. Oh my God, I was in a really bad place then. Oh gosh, but look what's happened since. So they're using that tool as well as a reflective tool. And, you know, carers will also feed back as well. I've never been asked that question before. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's allowing them time and space to think about sometimes difficult questions that they've never they've never thought about. Yeah, definitely. Leslie, I want you to have the last word before we go over to um to our mm -hmm. people who have been watching us with their questions. Um if you were going to encourage somebody who might be thinking about um joining empowered carers coming to empowered carers and getting and getting that support what would you say to them um i would say take the opportunity to talk to somebody that understands that doesn't judge you that cares about what they do and how they help people and also it, it's a it see it as you are you're being given that time to think about yourself without having any guilty feelings because that's the, that is the problem as a carer you think if you're not doing something straight away or you're not there all the time or you've got you can't you can't leave them 
you're not you've got no time for yourself so that 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 time for you is is really really important so embrace it I think I'd, I'd say and and like I said at the beginning you'll feel like you've had a breath of fresh air it's it's a, it's a lifeline and more than anything like I said I'm it sounds a bit corny, I suppose, but you really are angels in disguise because you don't realise just how much you do for people and the impact that that your help and guidance makes. And, you know, especially on those difficult days when you, you can't always say what you're feeling, but it comes out, you know, and it's all right to cry. <laughs> it's all right to have a laugh you know it's all right to sort of open up because if you're not right then you're not right for your carer uh, for, your, for your loved one you know you've got to think about your own well-being because if you you go down what's going to happen to them so you know and it's it's the coping mechanisms that you give you know it's it's and sometimes it's it's like the smallest thing and start kind of linking in with what uh, Rachel's just said. My one of my analogies was uh, with Amanda is uh, is like my goal, and it's climbing a mountain. And I started at the rock bottom of that mountain, and I've clawed my way up. There are day, there are times when I I come back down a bit, but I keep going up and and don't give up. Basically, you know, keep at it because it works. It helps more than you realise. Thank you so much, Leslie. Thanks, Leslie. In my head now, you've got one of those little tents. Have you seen those little tents on the side of a mountain? Have you seen yeah. them? Oh my God, why are they in a tent on a mountain? And I'm like, That's maybe you don't come down. Maybe you just stay in your little tent. Yeah, yeah. There are, yeah, there are times like that where you do say it's not stagnant. It just you stay as long as you're not going down you feel like oh right well I'm doing all right it's when you go down that you start questioning yourself and you think oh well why have I gone down but it's it's allowed there's no right and wrong answer it's you know you you, you will go up and you will go down that's life um but it's it's just keep going keep going and and through the support that you can get you can't put a price on it you really can't put a price on what you do, you know. Um, and like, like I said, you know, I, I don't know what I would have done with a man without Amanda. I really don't. I owe it so much because she's helped me so much. And it's not just, you know, obviously it's just not just my dad. It's, you know, when I lost my mum and everything as well, I'm becoming his carer of 24 7, 24 days. Oh God, I can't even get my words out. Sorry. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I didn't realise how hard it was for my mum until I had to do it. You know, he did he did deteriorate. But um, you know, I'd always always say to somebody, if you want to ask questions of how what you get from it, ask me anything, because I'll be honest. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much, Leslie. I know that was quite emotional for you. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be Don't sorry. Be sorry. <laughs> we said before we even came on, this is going to be, Rachel, you said this is going to be an emotional like one. Give them tissues. <laughs> I think no, it was I so don't... powerful, Leslie, as well. I mean, the way you highlight the fact that as a carer, you judge yourself, but actually within a session, you don't feel judged. No, and it, and it, it really is like, the thing is, I think, I think what what I struggle with is the fact that nobody really understands unless you're in that position. You know, I didn't understand before my dad got his diagnosis. I didn't understand how he would deteriorate and the support that he would need and how quickly it can happen. You know, that deterioration can, it can be stagnant for a while and then all of a sudden there's a huge dip. And it's such a big impact on your, your on you, not just, not mentally, it's physically as well. Mm. You know, but, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, like I say, 
people don't understand um and I, and I just don't I think there should be more people like yourselves you know that, that they support anyway it shouldn't just be in a particular area it should be nationwide because like I said all those other carers that are going through it exactly the same things they haven't got that support so they, it, it's going to impact on their mental health and then that's going to impact on the, on the loved one that's got dementia. It becomes a ripple effect, doesn't it? Absolutely. Working on it, Leslie. We hope to get round all Greater Manchester, <laughs> we do. all Lancashire, all the North yeah. West <laughs> and all England and maybe internationally one day. I'm, I'm going to oh, thank well, you. Fingers crossed. Thank you for that, Leslie. I want to read this out, but I'm a bit scared. That, well, I'll read it out because it's all about you. So not a question, this is from Cathy, not a question. I just want to thank you all so much. That was brilliant. Leslie, you are a star. You really opened up and expressed it all so beautifully. Your dad is really lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. He really is. Thank you. Steve's asked, um, I'd like to read the research. Will it be when will it be available? And also the questionnaires you use. The research is on our website. There is a tab that says research. So the academic papers that have been published are on there. Um, the questionnaire that we use, yeah, if you want to e email me, I can send you over the, the questionnaires that we use. Um, but it's the caregiver, um, care, care burden scale. Yeah, caregiver give burden scale, the perceived stress scale and the WellMebs. But yeah, if you email me, I can, I can send you the form that we that we use anyway. Brilliant, the Stephen. Research out. For Bolton's ongoing, isn't it? That's not quite finished yet. Yeah, yeah, we've only just yeah. started. Obviously, we want to start in April, so that's ongoing. Um, but the um, the care of burden scale is a scale that we've used throughout throughout all, and the perceived stress scales used um, in the empowered conversations, isn't it as well? So, them the, them are the main scales that we use, and the academic papers are on um, are on our website that have been published. And Steve, I'll do you an introduction to Rachel um, via email, so you'll you'll get um, Rachel's email address. Um, so Kathy is going to be in touch. Um, so thank you for that, Kathy. And yeah, we know that your dad lives in Salford, so you're going to be in touch. Brilliant. Um, but she says she's got a friend whose husband um, has Lewy body dementia, and it's getting worse, and she's struggling. And do we know of any services in Shropshire? There is the Lewy Body Society. Um, they are based in Wigan, but they're nationwide. So um, you can you can Google that, and obviously you can download booklets and you can speak to somebody there at the Lewy Body Society. Um, there is also, I think they also employ, and Lewy Body Society also employ an animal nurse as well. So you, you could ask for that as well, um, and I'm I'm sure they would know in your particular area what sort of services are available that um, but that would be my first part of call yeah likewise and i think if i rem if my memory serve, serves me correctly i think they sometimes body carers up as well or kind of introduce a carer to another carer um yeah because quite a lot of the time we find that people that have got that are caring for someone living with Louis body would like to kind of um you know be surrounded by like-minded people with it being a little bit different than other types of dementia. I, can, I can relate to that as well you know so if anybody ever wanted to ask any questions about our you know how how it is it's been for for my, us with my dad i'm happy to if they forward on any questions or anything else I, i'm happy to help anybody if i can there is Thank also you. the rare dementia uk there is a website as well but i think the living body society is, is embedded in that as well so yeah. um yeah and Steve, um, earlier on in the chat when we were talking about death and dying, he'd um, put a couple of great books. He says, um, we know all, we all know how this ends. Lessons about life and living from working with death and dying and the plain guide to grief. So I just wanted to share those to make sure people um, could make a note of them. And then Ali's on. Ali, I didn't even notice that you were on. I'm sorry. So I, I don't know how to say this word, so I'm going to make up a word. Um, I w I'm working with a new group I'm going for of family carers who are planning to set up their own voluntary peer support group um, who'd be inspired by who'd be inspired by what you're doing would 
be good to talk more about this offline. Could Emma perhaps put us in touch with one another to discuss further? Of course I can, Ali, no problem. Even though you used a really long word and I couldn't say it. Hmm. Won't tell you what it was. Um, and then Ali said, thanks for the powerful session, especially you, Leslie. I have to leave for another meeting now. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ali. Thanks, Thank Ali. Thank you. All right, so we are in our last few minutes. So if you have any other questions for Amanda, Rachel or Leslie, um, please pop them down in the Q&A now. I'll just do the do little survey thing. before. Hopefully Ali gets this before she leaves. Um, we're having another conversation next week. So that'll be our, it'll be our last conversation before the beautiful summer holidays. And it's a conversation um, with Dr. Kelly Lee, who will be talking to us about material citizenship. Um, if you've not come across it, just Google material citizenship. It's really, really interested re in research and the work that she's doing in care homes specifically. Um, it's the importance of stuff. I'm sure she wouldn't like me just describing it as that, but it's the importance of stuff that often gets overlooked. Um, the stuff that makes us feel good and, and feel like ourselves. Um, so the mug that we and hoovers and yeah, yeah. and like your favourite things. <laughs> yeah, things we connect to. Yeah. yeah. That we don't realise we connect to. We don't mm -hmm. like yeah. what's our you know our favourite toothpaste. My mug. Fav yeah, our mugs. What <laughs> what glass do we like our water in? All of that stuff. Um, right. Oh, and Barbara said really useful. Thank you, thank you, Barbara. It was lovely to have you thank on. You. And I'm sorry that chat function wasn't working. I will work out what went on with that um, next time. So, any more questions? Otherwise, we've we've got an early doors today, ladies. We didn't think we'd come in on time, but we have. So it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've I've missed out loads of things that I wanted to say. Sorry. Leslie, take a minute. You can have the last word. Oh crikey! Um, put the pressure on you. I'll give you a second to think about it. If if there's something you feel like you've not said, you you get the last word. Don't need to be me having the last word. Be kind to yourself. Nice. Be kind to yourself. And I think empowered carers are going to go with the empowered carers and then underneath strap line, angels in disguise. I think like Amanda and Rachel are going to get t-shirts, angels in disguise. Well, I, th I would happily buy them for them. <laughs> no, honestly, I, you really are. I don't, I don't, I, like I said, I, I know I, it, it sounds really corny and I keep it like, going over it and over it and over it but you really don't know how much it means to have somebody to be able to open up to and to be no judgment and to understand but more than anything that, that you I know that you genuinely care that you can't put you can't put a price on that so yeah you are angels in disguise thank you mm. I can't think of it without the voice, angels in disguise. <laughs> Got a whole brand going on. <laughs> Leslie, Amanda, Rachel, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. It's thank been you. an absolute pleasure to have a conversation with you all. And you too. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for watching. And hopefully I'll see some of you next week for um, our chat with Kellen. Have a lovely afternoon. And you too. Take care. Bye. Have a great afternoon. Take Bye. care. Bye.